This quick tutorial is going to be a little bit on the longer side because I'm going to be covering how to make a 3D Vroid VTuber avatar like the one that I use and how to set it up for streaming. So if that's something that you're interested in, keep watching. If you're more interested in the 2D VTuber avatars, then this video won't help you since a lot of the 2D ones are usually hand-drawn and manipulated through a form of mesh net puppet pinning in softwares like Live 2D which you need to buy a license for to use if you're making money using them. There are some free softwares for the 2D ones out like Wataru and others, but they're not as good in my opinion. All three programs that you'll need for the 3D avatars are absolutely free and much easier for beginners to set up and use. They'll all be linked in the description area of this video below for you. The first program you'll need to grab is Vroid Studio. This is what you're going to be using to make your 3D avatar, to set expression limits, and to export it as a VRM to use it for streaming. Vroid Studio used to be entirely in Japanese, so if you didn't know Japanese, it would have been a bit confusing to navigate. That's no longer an issue you have to worry about though, since their latest updates have English menus and more default to navigate to set up your Vroid. If you've ever customized a character in a video game, then you'll be able to make a Vroid. It's really that easy. Click on the presets you like in the program to set up your base and play with the sliders. When you have a base set up that you're happy with, you can start going into parts of it one by one to more personally customize it. Now, in terms of customization, though there are things that you can do in Vroid Studio, like draw your own hair and paint your own textures and eyes, unless you bring this model into Unity and know some 3D modeling yourself, there isn't too much else you'll be able to do or add to it. There are tutorials up and out for how to model it more in Unity, another free software if you want to do that, but I'm not going to get into it in this video at all. If you just want something easy to set up and use because you don't want to put your face on the internet like me, then this is more than enough for you. After you've spent some time getting a feel for how to add to and design your Vroid, you're going to want to go into the expression controls. This is very important. By default, the expressions can be a little intense. So definitely play with these sliders and set them to how extreme you want the expressions to be. When they're reacting together with you, the max is the expression you'll wind up with. I suggest adjusting the vowel max presets as well, because these are the shapes that the Vroids are going to be making with their mouths as they match your speech. You don't want anything to look too wonky while you're talking. I made quite a few adjustments to my own when I set him up and turned the max on a lot of these settings down quite a bit. When you're done with all that, you're going to want to export it as a VRM. There are some tutorials out on how to export them better, but you mainly want to focus on knocking some of these settings down a bit, otherwise they might be way too high to run very smoothly, especially if you're only using this model for the purposes we are in this video. They really don't need to be this high. It's normal for a bit of a lag while knocking these settings down, so be patient here. Once it's done, you can save it as just making a folder so you can save your VRM and your calibrations, which I'll get to next in the same place. Now the next thing you need is VC Face. This is a software you're using as you stream that makes your avatar mimic your speech and movements based on the feed coming from mic and your webcam. I literally use the mic that came with my headphones and a $15 webcam and it works with this. On the loading screen, go ahead and import the VRM you just made. On the settings on the right, you want to let it run its own check of your system and set itself to the best option to run on. Mine runs on toaster because my system is garbage, but this also means these will most likely work for you too if you're poor AF like me. So first time using this, it's going to run you through a very simple tutorial to let you know how to use it, which I absolutely love. After that, there's lots you can do with this. There are different looks you can set and edit, camera angles, and a lot of other fun stuff, but I'll leave all of that to you to mess with later. Now, the important things to know about this program, on the right, you have these two menus. These are important to pay attention to. If you find your avatar being a twitchy little spaz, you want to knock the slider up until it's not. This stabilizes the model during capture. Keep in mind this also slows the model's movements down quite a bit. Because mine runs on toaster, he's super spazzy and I keep this pretty high so my own model tends to move pretty slowly. If you don't want them floating all around the screen when you look around, use this slider. This is going to keep them in place or make them floaty depending on your head movement. Personally, I find it really distracting if they're just floating around all over the place, so mine is pretty still. 
the most important thing to do in VC Face is going to be to calibrate your model, and this is what you should really spend the most of your time on. This is what's going to set the model's expression reactions to match your own naturally by recording feed from your webcam. Click on the expression to start recording your own face in that expression. Slowly turn your head with this expression right, left, center, up, down, basically anywhere your face will be, and then save it. Do this with every expression and then save the calibration. That way you can load it the next time you load your model. Give it a test run when you're done, and if you see your model laughing when they shouldn't be, like when you turn to the side, make sure to recalibrate yourself looking to the side until your model is reacting less possessed. In the settings at the top, there's also a normalize expression setting you should turn on. Under expression settings, you can customize how much time your model takes to switch in and out of these expressions. If you want your model to slowly smile or quickly flash smiles, it's up to you. I find that slower reaction transitions outside of laughing tend to look the most natural, so they're a bit near the middle for my own model and for the most part for me. Lastly, I tend to use audio override on my model because I find mouth tracking with my crappy $15 webcam to just not work half the time. Now, this will make your model speech be triggered by sound, so you'll need to make sure you're in headphones and in a quiet environment if you don't want your model to start opening its mouth to every little sound. Now on to the last part of this tutorial, which is going to be how to use this model for streaming or recording. Grab OBS. This is another free software, and this is going to be your streaming and recording software. If you want, you can use Slobs too. They're basically the same thing and they're made by the same company, but Slobs has some extra crap for streaming on Twitch, like widgets for when people follow you and stuff that'll give you on-stream sound and visual notifications. You can look into that more on your own later if you want. For recording gaming and tutorials and stuff, OBS works fine. In my case, I use Slobs to live stream and OBS to record gaming and tutorials offline. You're going to keep VC Face up and running because again, this is your model and your webcam feed. The one thing I really like about VC Face though is that even though it's using your webcam to move the model, it's not actually capturing or projecting anything from your webcam to OBS. So you're not going to get any embarrassing moments with the model crashing and you suddenly being on camera. Which I don't know about you, but was very important to me when I was looking into what to use for myself. You're going to run a game capture in OBS or Slobs and select VC Face to capture the model and check Allow Transparency. Ticking this box on the bottom right of VC Face turns off the view of the menu so it's only capturing the model. From that point on, you're good to go. If your model ever becomes a bit misaligned, which does happen sometimes when you look too far to the right or left, you can recenter its position by clicking on Reset Position in VC Face and it'll recenter your model. That's it for this video. These models can be used in VR Chat or Discord or other things too. They're really easy to set up because the team behind VROID Studio and VC Face are freaking great. And you can very easily become your own cringe anime cat boy if you want to. That's it for this video. Later.